back guys to another um, army development video um, and as you can see by the codex underneath um, I'm going to do an army development on uh, the Harlequins. Um, so the Harlequins have uh, featured on the channel uh, very very rarely um, and when they have been on they've only been just in the shadows I suppose it's uh, quite quite ironic. They have always kind of just been a small little force um, attached onto the side of me Eldar um, Meal through Craft World. So as the force starts to get a little bit more in number, uh, it's currently sitting just over a thousand points now, so that is all fully painted as well, um, apart from just uh, two models, uh, which is uh, just the, sh uh, the Death Chester here, um, almost finished him, and the shadow seer uh, which i have just done the code so them guys that are paint so that'll bring the uh, the army up to just over a thousand points so i thought now would be a good time to kind of maybe do a bit of a, a of an army development for these guys um and i suppose it's it's mainly just to kind of get people's thoughts on the direction that the army should go in um you know the the theory behind what I want the army to do, what I want it to look like visually as well, because as you will know, I'm a very kind of uh, like fluff. I, I'm not massively competitive really. I just I like I like doing the the armies to kind of fit the philosophy of of what is wrote about them in the stories, and um, what you read about in codexes, whether it's this one or whether it's other ones where um, armies have fought against the Harlequins, such as like the Thousand Sons. There's a couple of stories with them. So, I wanted to kind of do the force, not uber competitive, but a force that can can hold its own, I suppose, uh, but it has to do it in the right way. Because you guys who know anything about Harlequins or any Eldar faction, really, maybe, you know, maybe it's the uh, Drakari, the exception a little bit. Um, they're a quite fragile army, especially Harlequins, are extremely fragile. Uh, they are tough, the, 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 you know, in regards to the combat power, they're, they're tough for that, uh, they can hit hard, but if you fail that initial getting in there, if, you know, you can't go up against Tau gun lines with these and just sit back, you know, you have to take the fight to them, so that's kind of what I envision anyway for what I want the army to, to represent and how I want it to play as well. So, um, I'm going to take, a, uh, as we take a bit of a, lo uh, a look, not necessarily through the codex, this isn't a codex review, it's more of an army development video, is just looking at what I've currently got in the force, and the things that I want to kind of add into it. Um, I don't really necessarily want to talk about tactics, really, it's more to do with just what I kind of want the army as a whole to do. Um... And like I say, it, it, it's it's to get your ideas as well. Um, you know, experienced Harlequin players out there, uh, Eldar players even, will have a bit of insight. Um, it's just so that you can, you know, it, it, you can comment on the video. Uh, you know, you might see a particular thing that I've put in the list that you think, no, that doesn't work, take it out, put this on, or, you know, you put some more upgrades, you know, anything like that, just a little bit of advice. I mean, I may take it on board, uh, I may try out, you know, different combinations as well. So certainly leave your comments for that. Um, but I'll then t so we'll step away, um, and then of course we'll uh, I'll go through what I've what I've currently got uh, wrote down for the army. So um, we'll be back in a moment. Right. Okay. So this is my proposed list. So um, aiming for as close to possible, of course, uh, two thousand points generally tends to be the norm. Um, 2,000 points of uh, just a pure Harlequins list. I don't want any allies in this. I don't want any... Well, I haven't got any Dark Eldar, so I can't put them in. But if I did, I wouldn't have them in. Um, I do have a Craft World or 3 Force. I don't want nothing to do with them. This is pure Harlequin, Harlequin list. So, um, it is uh, two uh, detachments that I've uh, come up with so far. The first, of course, being a Battalion Detachment. Um, I haven't decided fully on the mask form yet. Uh, but I'll go into that a little bit later. So, for the battalion detachment, um, obviously you can have up to uh, three HQ. Uh, so, I'm going to just take the two. 
So, and these are going to be the uh, Troop Master. So I've got two of the two Troop Masters. So I've got a Troop Master, first of all, with the Holland's Caress. And the Holland's Caress, uh, it is uh, quite a nice weapon. Um, it's a very, very, very popular weapon as well uh, for the Holland's Caress. I'll just get the, uh, the stats up for us. Uh, so the Harlequin's Crest, it's obviously it's plus two strength. Uh, it is uh, AP minus two and uh, one damage. So it is just the one damage, but the amount of attacks that these guys get um, is unbelievable. And especially on a Troop Master. So a Troop Master gets five attacks. So five attacks with that weapon. Obviously, it, they are only strength three Harlequins, uh, the same as most Eldar uh, units out there. So... With that low strength, the Harlequin's Crest is obviously putting that up to strength 5. So, it's a, it's a lot better. I mean, things like Wraith Knights and Tanks, of course, they're still going to struggle in combat. Uh, but you don't want to kind of target vehicles with these in combat anyway. You want to you wanna blow them up with the Fusion Pistols and stuff first, which I'll cover later. So, I'm going to give the Caress um, and the Fusion Pistol, of course. The obligatory choice these days. It is a very nice weapon, and especially since chapter approved, uh, they're only seven points as well, so uh, it's an absolute bargain. So the Troop Master, of course, he is hitting on twos, so it was a no-brainer there. Now, I do actually need to purchase some more fusion pistols, because I I have run out. Um, so either eBay or Shapeways, or if any of you guys know anywhere else that can do them, absolutely leave it in the, in the comments uh, at the bottom. It should be great. So I've got a fusion pistol, like I say, and, and that is it. So it's he's nice and cheap. 84 points. Done. One HQ choice. He is a character, of course. So if you hide him, do him well, position him correctly, he can't be targeted. Unless you've got snipers and things like that. Um, next one is another troop master. Now, controversial choice, this one. Um, I have gave him the power sword. Reason for this is because um, I actually modelled it on the on the model a uh, long time ago. Uh, well, back in seventh, just at the end of seventh, and I don't. I've already painted them up, and I don't want to kind of ruin it by taking them off. So I've given the power sword, and he has a fusion pistol as well. Now, what my thoughts are is to upgrade this power sword uh, for the relic, um, which the relic is the storage sword just bringing it up now and storage sword it's so instead of it being an usual power sword which is strength of the user uh, ap minus three um it is plus one strength so yes it's only str strength four uh but it, it's ap minus three which is the same but it is d3 damage uh, which is a little bit better than the damage one for a normal power sword uh, but the good thing about this as well is that he re-rolls failed hit rolls. Um, coupling that, that up with his own ability, uh, which is the choreo choreographer of war, uh, re-roll failed wounds. He's re-rolling hits and wounds, uh, which is very nice. Uh, this is a bubble effect as well, so six inches. So that means with me taking two of these, I can spread them amongst my troop units as well uh, and be able to get all of my troops, all my standard harlequins, um, re-rolling to wound which is very nice so two of them uh, that guy with the sword he is slightly cheaper uh, 81 points for that absolute bargain for he's not like a, he, you know he's not a tank he's not going to be able to take the last cannon to the face or anything like that um, although they do have in run saves anyway but it's not what he's designed for uh, these guys are to buff the rest of the troops up so moving on to troops um, this I, the thing with the troops is that the they can get very very expensive now these troops are a little bit subject to change because i built these a slightly different to what currently is the meta but i think it's going to work and i'm quite happy with the way that they are at the moment anyway so i am going to do three lots of troops uh, so let's put th troop so the first lot of troops uh, these uh, I've got two squads already fully painted, so the first lot um, is the so I've got a troop five man 
So each one of them is going to be a five man squad. I'll just dip all these. So the first squad has two fusion pistols. A little bit controversial because of course everybody's taking the fusion pistols because they're a bargain. This is where things might change here because I do have some points left over. So two fusion pistols and two caresses. The reason I've took only two caresses, and like I say, this very well may change. I may, might stick an extra one or, one or in, is mainly because of the casualties. So if they start taking casualties, I can just take off the regular guys who are equipped with just the standard Harlequin's Blade. The volume of attacks that these guys get, you know, it's still going to be pretty decent. So so the first squad, of course, these the, the, this is a unit that is painted and completed. So two fusion pistols and two harlequins caress and then the rest of them just with the shuriken pistol which shuriken still a pretty decent weapon and of course uh, just the harlequins blade and that particular squad is 93 points so nice and cheap there obviously they are only a five man unit but of course that means that morale is going to be a little bit better to keep a hold of so the next squad same again five man is almost the same Apart from these one have two Harlequin's Kisses. So Harlequin's Kiss, I couldn't have a Harlequin's List without having something with a Harlequin's Kiss. It's such an iconic weapon. Uh, it's Maybe it's not necessarily the best weapon, uh, but I just think it looks so cool. So two Kisses and two Fusion Pistols in this one as well. And, like, and this is another troop unit that is completed. So this squad is the same points, so 93 points. And uh, just in case as well so for the caress of course you you know it's it's plus two strength minus two ap and one damage and for the harlequin's kiss uh, it's plus one strength so strength four uh, ap minus one and d3 damage so it's weaker on the ap weaker on the actual strength but of course there is that chance of getting the d3 so um so there so that's it, it's a pretty decent weapon it's not the it's not necessarily the best but it, it, it can do well so the last squad, which I haven't actually purchased yet, is going to be a little bit more of a hard a, a hard hitter. Um, this, like I say, it might change because these guys may get some upgrades. I might very, very carefully cut, cut the weapons off and upgrade them. But I will leave that up to maybe yourselves for some advice for that. So this final squad is the most expensive because it has more upgrades in it. So this one has... Um, it's got three caresses in it so this is kind of wanting to go more towards the, the maybe the meatier targets so three caresses two harlequins embraces in this and the harlequins embraces are pretty decent as well so it's plus one strength so strength four it is ap minus three and one damage so it is only one damage but it's got that minus so it's basically like a power sword i suppose with plus one strength um it's not too bad of a weapon i just thought stick it in um you know it, it, it it's the minus three really it's to get people to feel the saves the volume of attacks the wounds are going to come um and of course with this particular squad i have gave every single player fire uh, a fusion pistol so every single one of them in this squad um which is why i'm going to have to go and get some fusion pistols from somewhere so this particular squad comes in at 133 and that is the obligatory part done so two hq three troops not necessarily maybe it's not the best kitted out i suppose you know looking at it but there's reasons i can take off you know the the, the weaker ones the ones with just the blades the, there is room for maybe's move around here this is going to be the big discussion point here maybe it's the troops what kind of equipment to give them do i give them more do i give them less you know and there's also the painting factor as well i didn't want like six lots of troops because that's a lot of diamonds and a lot of work and a lot of time away from the other armies and the other other stuff for this unit that i can be concentrating on um call me lazy but they're a nightmare to paint they're a joy to paint as well they're, they're a double-edged sword, but it does take it out of your paint and so many diamonds. Um, so, and, and there is another factor that I wanted to concentrate on more in this force. So, which is where we lead on to fast attack. So, for fast attack, 
um, as soon as these models came out, um, I absolutely had, had, had to get the Skyweavers. I thought they looked amazing, uh, the two-man jet bike. So this is the proposed list. At the moment, I currently ha own uh, four, um, and they're painted. They're all, all completed. Um, I'll just go and grab one, actually, just in case that you haven't seen. Um, they will be featuring um, soon in a couple of battle reports. So there's one of them all finished up. So there's another, let's try and do this with one hand. So I decided to do the base matching uh, a little bit like the Thousand Suns diamond. So got a Necron head there and with the Zephyr Glaive and the Hairwire Cannon. So I've got another three of them uh, all finished and painted up. So, so I own four. But the proposed list is to have a lot more than that. So for fast attack, when the pen decides to start working, um, plan on having uh, where are we at. So I've got a five-man squad, another five-man squad, and a three-man squad of the jet bikes so obviously 13 all together on the board um I, I just think that's you know it's, it's a lot of bikes they've got very good abilities um in regards to shooting avoiding incoming fire they've automatically got the hollow uh, the hollow launchers um so they can reduce the the, the miners so it's a miners want to hit them so they're quite well protected so I just think it's going to look brilliant with, with all of these jet bikes, you know, 13 of these. Plus, of course, you've got the transport unit, uh, the, the transport vehicles, the Star Weavers as well. It's just going to look, they're all going to swarm like, like a, well, like like bees, I suppose. So the first, uh, the, the, they're pretty much all identical, to be honest. So the five-man squad, um, these all have the hair wire cannons. Every single jet bike has them. Um, I actually already started to equip these with Hairwire even before Hairwire got boosted. Uh, but this is where I want my anti-tank ability and my, sh my shooty part of the force. So every one of them has Hairwire. And in the five-man squads, I have four of them uh, with Zephyr Glaives. So Zephyr Glaive on four of them. And a star baller on the remaining guy. And the star ballers are not too bad of a weapon actually. But there is another reason that I've took the star baller. Um, so I'll just get to the page in the codex. I'm just kind of juggling everything around here. I've got my codex just on my lap. So the star baller, um, it's a 12 inch, it, uh, tw it's a grenade. So it's 12 inch range. Uh, it's grenade D3 as well. Um, which I think is brilliant. Because you might end up getting three grenades off one guy. Um, it's strength 6. Uh, for it being a grenade, um, that's quite decent. It's AP minus three, and it's two damage as well. So you could kill a few people off before you charge in, or just to back, you know, maybe some support and fire before the troops go into and target. I just think it's pretty decent. I mean, yes, you've got your hair wire cannons anyway to, to pepper up an absolute shed load of uh, firepower. The hair wire cannons are D6, uh, the uh, assault D6 shots. Um, so there's a lot of firepower coming from there and you've got your star ballers as well but another reason I've chose these is once these start taking casualties the first guy that will be took off will be the star baller guy and that leaves the Zephyr Glaives the more combat element ready to go in for, for slicing people up um, in the third in the three man squad um, the same there there will be two Zephyrs and one star baller so i think that's uh i'm quite happy with the way that that layout is um not too not too bothered about any major changes there um with them being quite a lot i think it's going to be uh quite impressive to see on the board you know all these jet bikes lined up ready to go um you know there is I could, I could change things around you know maybe take one out of here and make one into a, like a five a four and a four you know, there's ways that I can work around that as well. 
So points wise for them is uh, 249 for the five man squads um, each. So 249, 249 and 147 for the uh, three man. So that is the fast attack element uh, done for that. This is still in the battalion. Um, next is uh, we're starting to get towards the end of this side of it here. So heavy support. Uh, nice and simple for the heavy support. There is only one heavy support unit that you can take from Harlequins, and that is uh, the Void Weaver. Uh, it's pretty decent. It's not amazing, um, but I'm going to take two of them. So two Void Weavers. Uh, each one of them has two shooting cannons uh, and a, a hair wire cannon. And you can also upgrade the hair wire cannon to a prismatic cannon. Which I have done that. Um, maybe there's another controversial uh, choice there as well. The reason I've done this is because there's so many other options that you can get for your hair. Obviously I've got a load of hair wire in the, the, star, uh, the sky weavers. That I'm, you know, there's absolutely tons and tons of hair wire here. Uh, you've obviously got your transport unit that has your shooting cannons uh, for, uh, you know, your heavy firepower there as well, I suppose. So for these ones, I decided it's the only, other, it's the only other weapon, and these are the only unit that can take it. So I'm going to take it. So two prismatic cannons in that squad there, so obviously one each. So each one of them has a prismatic cannon and two shooting cannons, and the prism. Uh, the prismatic cannon uh, it's got three different modes of fire so you've got your dispersed which is assault d6 uh, strength 4 ap minus 2 1 damage it's uh, assault d6 however so it is quite weak but you're getting a lot of firepower from it you've got your focused which is they're all the same range they're all 24 inch range you've got assault d3 uh, strength 6 ap minus 3 and d3 damage not too bad and then you've got your lance. This is more kind of your las cannon shot you, 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 to be able to do your damage against vehicles. Um, it is only assault one. It's strength eight. It's AP minus four, and it's D six damage. So there's kind of like your las cannon, I suppose, from that side of it. Not that I'm really relying on it, but I just thought you know if for these I'm going to take them because I may need that weapon, and it's the only thing that can take it. So. And that's it. That, that's everything all for the heavy support. Um, so each one of them is 108 points. So 216 for that. And that is the heavy support element done. Uh, the only other thing for the battalion detachment is your, tran your dedicated transport. So as you can probably guess with us having three lots of troops, we're going to have three star weavers. And each one of these is 99 points. And that's it, no upgrades, because you can't. 297 points for them, and that's it. So three Star Weavers, done. Next is going on to uh, the Vanguard side of it. So the Vanguard, actually, um, yeah, is the second detachment. And this is the pretty, pretty simple, pretty quick. So for the HQ, I am going to be putting in the shadows here. Get a little bit of psychic support in there. Um, so the psychic powers are really, really good for the Harlequins as well. Um, plus I've got the model. Um, makes sense to stick it in. Um, I, I, I just think the model looks really cool. So shadows here. At the moment, no upgrades. I may upgrade it to give the neuro, pist uh, the neuro pistol. I'm not a massive fan of it though, so I think I might just cut it off and replace it with the shuriken. I'm not too sure about that, however. So for the Vanguard, you have to also then take three elite choices. So the elite aspect of this is going to be two Death Jesters. Love the Death Jester model. think it looks awesome. Um, they're also extremely cheap at 45 points per model. Um, of course the, um, the the characters as well so you can dot them around hide them and the good thing about these guys as well uh, yes they are character I thought they were is that they can also target characters as well so I can annoy people's um, you know like maybe you've got a lieutenant uh, primaris lieutenant or you know a, a death guard unit maybe uh, Felthius for example 
or somebody like that anyway just any characters these guys can take pot shots at them as well and um, they've got some pretty decent rules and of course they are an elite choice to to fill that slot um, and last but not least uh, would be the solitaire so the solitaire um i absolutely love the look of this model um i think i wouldn't really not put him in uh he's, it's not the linchpin, it's not what the entire force relies on, um, but he's a fun model. Um, and that's what I do my list about. I, I put models in that I like. So that's what I've tried to stick to here. Obviously there is stuff that I don't own yet, um, such as a lot of these bikes, but the bikes, I love the look of the model, so I want a lot of them in. Um, I like the Star Weaver you know, chassis and... So it makes sense to put the Star Weavers in and also the the heavy gunship version, the Void Weaver. So that, that's kind of where I've gone with this. So the last entry, like I say, is Solitaire. Um, he comes in at 98 points. So altogether, that is 188 points for that. Um, and with all the upgrades, that would be... Um, 1955 points so there is room room obviously for extra stuff here so there is a, a deficit of 45 which more than likely will be getting used somewhere up here for the troops forgive my horrendous writing by the way because uh, i don't write very neatly um but yeah of course it does leave me with points to be able to to dot around or maybe if there's anything that you guys can think that maybe take out add in you know maybe change a weapon or take a weapon off or you know anything like that to use them points and maybe dish something or you might be able to seize a pattern or something that i can't then absolutely that would be you know quite helpful and it gets people talking in the comments section as well so um as for the command points of course uh, battalion five uh, but it is of course all battle forged as well so there's another three and then you get one for Vanguard there as well. So that'll give me nine command, uh, nine command points. So quite a healthy amount of command points for the Harlequins. Because there is some nice stratagems to be able to use. Um, not go into all stratagems. Like I say, this isn't a, a Codex review. Um, you know, th there's loads of channels out there that have done it. And I would basically just be copying um, the same stuff. Because, you know, you can't really kind of do a codex review that's any different really the only other real things that i wanted to, to maybe kind of touch on a little bit was uh the, the mask form um now for you guys who never never like read anything about the uh, the the harlequins especially in eighth um i advise you to watch the codex reviews that are online um or um the, you know pick the codex up of course but the mask forms is like a way to kind of customize your, your army a little bit more um it, you know a lot of other armies to have the same like the orcs have like their clan culture and you know stuff like that but anyway um if you're watching this he's probably already know so the mask form that i was thinking for these now i do have a lot of flyers um well i say flyers a lot of skimmers a lot of bikes so movement for these is pretty much guaranteed anyway because the you know they already they already move sixteen and then they get the additional twenty uh, the additional six anyway for them just being harlequins. Um, I mean the where have they gone? It's called the actual rule again. Uh, blur of color. So when the unit advances, you add six to its move, so you don't have to roll. So they're, they're pretty fast anyway. So it got me thinking. Now the main one that gets played lots and lots and lots online is uh, the Sauron Sprite uh, Spite, sorry not Sprite, that's a drink um, Sauron Sprite, the Serpent's Brood so models with this form that can fly or that are embarked upon a transport that can fly treat all pistol weapons they are equipped with as Assault 1 weapons during a turn in which they or the transport they are embarked upon advanced which is amazing to your treating pistol weapons as assault. And in addition, these models do not suffer the penalty to their hit rolls for shooting assault weapons during the turn in which they're advanced. That is absolutely amazing. Especially for all of these transport units. Everybody that can, you know, that can all fire. 
Now that is the most common one that I've seen. And it, it is a good one. It is powerful. Uh, it's not overpowered, I, I would say, because they are only pistols that you, you've still got to, to take the range into effect. So I was thinking about that. But then I've also seen some other good ones as well. So my, as you'll see, my mask is extremely similar to the Midnight Sorrow. It's very, very similar because the only real difference is that I've painted purple gems instead of red. So I am inclined to go with uh, Midnight Sorrow to keep it as fluffy as possible. But that being said, technically, on a technicality, I could get away with and use my own. And in friendly games, I might end up switching around. Another one that I've looked at, uh, which I think is quite easy to remember, because um, that's what I like to do. I like to pick a one that's quite easy to remember. I'm not going to forget it. It's not too complex. Um, and also, it's going to benefit me. Uh, the other one was uh, the Frozen Stars one. Um, uh, I can't say it. Hysterical, yeah, Hysterical Fury. And all that is, is every time you charge... Um, you add one to the attack's characteristic. Now, a single Harlequin Trooper gets four, so that's bumping up to five on the turn that they charge. Very handy, and also very easy to remember. So, not too sure about which particular mask form to choose. Um, you know, the Sauron Spite one, it is good, especially because of the way that I've built my army. It's highly tempting, but I kind of don't want to follow suit and... I don't want to be that person who's just doing the same thing that everybody else does um, in regards to the way that the that they run the force. Um, so I'm a little bit I'm a little bit disinclined to do that. But if it gives my army an advantage, I suppose you know there is that element as well. But I mean that 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 is also a, 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 a good talking point. So certainly leave your comments in the bottom. It'd be really interesting to see what you think first of all of the list, uh, the equipment, uh, but especially the mask form looking at the way that i've built this force what mask would you think uh, would, would would suit this best and why um of course there is the fluff element as well which was the um the midnight sorrow one uh, which is still pretty handy to be able to move an additional d6 when the fall back and console it uh, up to six um and that's pretty much it uh, it's not a massively long review or anything like that um the only other real thing of course was just the shadow say obviously for the powers um i mean i'd probably take twilight pathways it, it's a really really good power um so just in case anybody doesn't know um it's a, got a watch charge value of six if manifested select a friendly harlot one's unit within three inches of the sighter and visible so it does mean that i'm going to have to keep the shadow sea very close to units i want to use this on um that unit can immediately move as if it was the moving phase so very handy so obviously i'd be wanting to run her very close to say the i don't know well the troopers are going to be in transports anyway but maybe it's one of the maybe it's one of the transports that's got the the troops in that has the best equipment you know it's quite a nice ability or or maybe it's even on the solitaire but uh, there's some nice uh, little powers. Um, I'll not run through them. Um, relics, the only other relics that I was thinking about using. If I decide to use the Mask of uh, Midnight Sorrow, uh, I would take Midnight's Chime. A very handy one. Um, so it's a Midnight Sorrow model only once per battle at the beginning of the fight phase. The bearer can activate it until the end of the phase. All Midnight Sorrow units increase their attacks characteristic by one. Uh, while they're within six inches of the bearer now that is really really good um i don't have to charge for that to go off either so it's a little a slight little bit better than the frozen stars mask um the only other one would, would of course be um uh, kegarax rose or sagarax road however, however you say his name and give it to the solitaire pay, pay a command point and give them that because i've already got the storied sword up here so Segarax Rose, just for you who doesn't know, um, it is a it's a Harlequin's Kiss. It replaces it. Um, it is plus one strength. It's AP minus three, D three damage, but you reroll failed wound rolls for this weapon, and when attacking infantry, uh, the weapon has a damage of three rather than D three, so it's quite a handy one to have there. Um, so 
that is pretty much it for the Harlequin. So, like I say, it comes to 1,955 points. Uh, there is a 45-point playground, I suppose, there. Uh, it would be um, very, very interesting to find out your thoughts on the list. You know, how do you think that it's going to work against uh, some of the armies that is featured on, on the channel? Um, you know, how would it do against uh, the Ultramarines or the Death Guard, uh, the Tau, anything like that? Any advice, of course, as well, especially from uh, experienced Harlequin players. And I am going to run a couple of games with the Harlequins the way they are now anyway. Um, at a thousand points and maybe it's a little bit over because they are starting to grow. Uh, just to get them on the channel and get some Battlefield experience with them as well. And then as we start to add more and more units to them, of course it means that it, it's, it's going to look better on the table. And with that Battlefield experience I can you know jump in there with 1500 or two and, and eventually up to 2000 points but hopefully with the, everything that gets discussed in the comments section as well it, it, you know it means that you of maybe you know with the advice you will help shape what this army can do and what it'll look like on the channel as well um not the paint scheme of course that's already settled but but the actual philosophy and what it, what it'll entail what it'll have on the channel so thanks very much for uh, for watching, guys. I hope you have uh, enjoyed the little kind of insight to what's going on in my brain about how I want to construct these. Um, looking forward to getting them up and running. Uh, even just the small games, I've been hammering on about getting the Harlequins on the channel for so long, and it's it's finally starting to happen. Um, they're such a cool looking faction. Maybe it's not the strongest, but they are such an iconic looking, amazing looking army. Um, that it, it it's it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be a blast to see them all all on the channel so thanks very much for watching guys um if any if you think that anybody would benefit from this a uh, little insight to the harlequins or anything like that certainly uh, give them a shout um give us a like and a sub as well it certainly helps us out and spurs us on to do more videos like this as well um but stay tuned for further battle reports and some further uh, army development views as well um, and if you would like to see uh, anything else on the channel, certainly leave us a comment. Uh, but until next time, guys, happy wargaming. <laughs>